Hello and welcome to the Engage Brain Podcast. Uh, so now I'm uh, going live. And uh, thank you for coming in, uh, Ian and Cole, talking about uh, aging, stress, maybe uh, some secrets for how we can uh, live longer. Uh, or like some sort of secret anti-aging recipe. Yeah, um, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so I'm starting with the question as I kind of scroll down my screen here. Oh, I'm totally lost. Uh, what were the things that uh, got you interested in kind of living longer um, anti-aging? Uh, well, I've I've known lots of people throughout my life, like in my family, that have been that have lived to be like 101 and 103. Um, and I think that's really cool to be able to be alive for that long and be able to see how the world changes. So if if I could live up to maybe even 90, I, I would absolutely love that just to see how things have changed as when I was a kid to when I'm 90 or so, just to see what kind of big um, change the world has made and just like how like the common things that I used to think were either really cool or like were super important may be maybe one of like the mundane things that the future has simply because of some technology advance or just some new finding. Um, um, just living long and like being able to spend the most time possible with like your family and your loved ones was something really special. So when I saw living long on the list, I was like, hey, check that out. See how long we can live. Yeah. No. Oh, in taking, did you guys take that quiz that you had us take? Yeah, we did. Yes. Uh, what were the ages that you got? Uh, I got, I believe I got to around 89. Okay. So I got very close to like my target. Yeah, age. yeah. I was just under 90 as well. So. Okay. Yeah, I think I had 84. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, a lot better than some of the people in our class. Mm, yeah, like <laughs> 55. That yeah. was like, oof. Yeah. yeah. I, I think. Uh, I th what I learned from that was that it was a combination of some people just seem to have better genetics. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. and I think you talked a little bit about that with um, um, some of the places uh, that have the, the blue zones. Yes. That we might get uh, into in a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it, a lot of it is the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were just came back from Hy-Vee. hy, -Vee. hy -Vee Groceries, sponsor yeah. of today's episode. Uh, <laughs> really uh, uh, we came back from Hy-Vee and learning about nutrition and uh, kind of the toll that sugar plays on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It, yeah. You, you never really think about how much like actual like sugar like is in something until you actually put it in front of you and be like, wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that was yeah. definitely shocking to be able to realize how much sugar is actually there. Like, it's just like, wow. Yeah. And you're from Illinois? Yes. Uh, Lombard? So yes. basically mm -hmm. like suburban Chicago? Yeah, that's and essentially. Uh, outside Middleton, Middleton Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, so uh, I watched a episode, or this documentary on corn, uh, which was like in Iowa, they bought corn, uh, mm -hmm. and they grew corn like on, on this plot of land, like an acre of corn, mm -hmm. and they followed it from like growing it to processing and all this stuff, and they wanted to just like see what their corn became, and tons of it became high fructose corn syrup. Okay. And then they like went to the grocery store and tried to find like how like, we um, did you guys go out and find like fruits and vegetables or something like that? Yeah, yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they went out in the grocery store and tried to find everything that had high fructose corn syrup, and it was like everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I remember. Um, did you guys have New Year's resolutions at all this thing? Uh, for the most part, just work, trying to work harder and get better at the sport I play. Yeah. yeah that's pretty much the same for me. Yeah. If I always set one that's too high, I always end up not reaching it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Shout out to Loris Men's Volleyball. <laughs> yes. 2-0 right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that as a, <laughs> a, a, the um, a recommendations for later. Uh, but uh, so a couple of years ago, I uh, gave up red meat. Uh, and mm -hmm. then the next year, I was going to try to give up sugar. And I started researching like how I could give up sugar. Mm -hmm. And it was impossible. I had a oh, yeah. bowl sugar of candy uh, uh -huh. on, on my um, t desk if you guys want any. I, except mm -hmm. Amy accordingly would be really mad, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, yeah, just trying to like figure out how to... Um, yeah. get around that but going back to the living long um, we see that it's it's a lot of it is those choices that we make so mm -hmm. if you exercise more if you yeah. uh, you know try to sleep more um, yeah. get, and then get always researching about what you're eating and how, what you can do to make what you're eating better than it was before mm -hmm. yeah. like trying to cut like obviously you're not going to be able to cut sugar out of your diet completely but just making the efforts towards limiting how much sugar you do intake simply because I'm sure everyone um, already consumes too much sugar um, mm -hmm. for their systems, and just being able to like maybe even cut a fourth of that off would 
help you tremendously, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, what are some um, really interesting findings that you've had in your research so far from uh, living long and, and stress? Um, okay. you, you can go. Um, so we started off with just trying to look at what part of the body that the, uh, the stress affects the most. And um, we did find um, a really cool website that gave us the musculoskeletal system, the respiratory systems, the cardiovasculars, the endocrine, um, gastrointestinal, and the nervous system, as well as the reproductive systems. So that was really cool to see how much of stress is actually implemented in our lives. Mm -hmm. And just being able to um, process it and like work with it, it can really determine how well you live and how long you can live. Yeah, yeah that definitely. Uh, one thing that I found to be just really interesting was um, the fact that uh, when, when you do get stressed and how your um, hypothalamus and pituitary glands like start to kick in and uh, start to make all the stress hormone, the cortisol, and uh, start to pump adrenaline in you, I just found that to be really interesting how, when, how that entire purpose was made for basically, like we've said before in class, fight or flight situations where it's either you find, you f like you, you have a predator right in front of you and that your pituitary glands just kick on and start pumping the cortisol through you just to make sure that you can either try to fight it off or make sure that you can get away. And I find that to be, I, I didn't know that before, so I've yeah. just found that to be really interesting. And then being able to tell how like we've become desensitized to certain dangers um, that we take trying to write uh, a five page paper the night before it's due has the same, you're, you still are getting the same cortisol pumping through you as you would if a lion was going to try to eat you. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that we can't differentiate those two kind of dangers. And it was also very interesting to learn about the effects of too, of, um, too much cortisol in your system that would have on just your brain in like general and your hippocampus, especially since that's the one of the parts of the brain that I believe is affected the most. Mm -hmm and can affect you as a person the most. Um, yeah. And I believe that, I think that was one of the most interesting things that I found out while we were researching mm -hmm. this. Yeah, and I think we talked about this morning that uh, the hippocampus is this target for the cortisol, helpful in the short term, as you're saying, uh, because you want to remember the things that got you into trouble uh, yeah. so that you don't do that in the future, yeah. uh, but also uh, to remember how you get out of them uh, mm -hmm. if you sur survive that fight or flight um, situation. But then because the hippocampus has those receptors uh, that when we're constantly faced with threats or we're, we see five page papers that we get all the time mm -hmm. or you know social new social situations that we get all the time as these kind of dangerous things, mm -hmm. then it just kind of wears that down um, uh, as we um, mm -hmm. uh, use it more and more. And especially when the hippocampus is the brakes on the system mm -hmm. that ends up pumping the, <laughs> the cortisol. Yeah. So if you lose your brakes, you just have a run away, yeah. run away train. Yeah, yeah, we keep dulling our knives before we even try to cut anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's definitely one of the biggest problems I think that we can face with having too much cortisol or too much stress in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how about uh, are there any kind of confusing things that you think you've come across in in your topic? I I wouldn't say confusing. I think if anything, it's. Um, just that I, we, me, myself, personally, or just we as a group just haven't researched it enough because mm -hmm. I feel like with a lot of information that we were given, um, a lot of it is is straightforward. Um, and I mean, sure, like, there's some things that might confuse you just simply because of all the the names of the, of the brain parts that you have mm -hmm. simply yeah. because, like, hypothalamus that's a really big word <laughs> yeah so that's just I feel like that's one of the things that can can confuse people but a lot of the information um, about this topic I feel like was just was very straightforward and it wasn't mm -hmm. like we had to like dig through a paragraph to figure out yeah. what the actual meaning of it was it was everything was very straightforward and yeah. I think that's definitely really good with this kind of information because mm -hmm. when someone is worried about if they're too much if they're too stressed or if just something like that in general it's really nice to have such a straightforward have to have straightforward information simply because you don't want to find it and then have to try to decode it mm -hmm. and then find out what your like the answer to your question is it's very nice that it has all the answers just right there for you yeah, yeah. Um, I guess we did find a, a couple articles that were talking about how uh, rats were influenced with stress and how long they would live um, having being 
uh, stressed out for so long. Mm-hmm. And just, just seeing that and trying to see how long, how we can like relate that to the, the human inter- interactions that we have is, is always like a fine line between rats and humans that we can't yeah. really, we have to be careful because we, we don't want to do too stressful things to humans where we can do really stressful things to rats. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's always cool to learn about. Yeah, so like what is the human version of a forced swim? Mm-hmm. Oh, for yeah. rats. So yeah. you like you put the rat in the, the maze with no platform and you just see how long they can swim until they start yeah. drowning yeah. and then pull them out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what does that look like in, in the humans? Yeah, uh, that that's yeah. I mean that's definitely brings up ethical reasoning. Um mm-hmm. and I mean I I could I could see it happening if there were willing uh subjects that wanted to either like maybe the scientists were that were researching this would um, aff- like do do it on e- like on themselves mm-hmm. because I feel like that's definitely a lot better than going out and trying to find people to do research on mm-hmm. because again that brings up the whole testing humans mm-hmm. and then uh, that's just it's a rough topic right now I yeah. believe yeah I think we kind of see some people putting pushing themselves to the edges of fatigue i don't know if it's stress but mm-hmm. edges of fatigue with like ultra marathons or yeah, other and we're kind of out. yeah like long term endurance mm-hmm. things uh like I, I watched a documentary earlier this j term about uh, the berkeley marathon uh, which mm-hmm. takes place in like the hills of of tennessee uh kentucky area mm-hmm. uh, and it's a 100 mile marathon uh each uh, of 20 laps uh, self-guided you have to like go find a book page Mm-hmm. And like bring thirteen pages back. Uh, you get a maximum twelve hours per lap, and maximum sixty hours total to run this hundred miles. Uh, Sixty-five thousand feet of elevation change. Oh my gosh! Jeez. Yeah, and um, like most people don't even finish no. like two laps. Yeah, <laughs> doing this. So wow. uh, we could like kind of look at those people as like the rats uh, in yep. this kind of four swim things. And, yeah, you know like. Uh, what do you have to put yourself through to kind of like mm-hmm. get to that point? Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing I think that teaches us about stress is that small doses of stress build up to allow us to take larger doses. I think that's yeah. kind of like yeah. as both mm-hmm. athletes, like that's the point of your training. Yeah, mm-hmm. you you put yourself in rough situations, and then after you get out of those, you rest, recover, mm-hmm. and then you're. I feel like you're definitely able to take more than you were before. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, I, I know I mentioned blue zones earlier. Now, that was one of the things I was most interested in. Um, mm-hmm. Could you talk a little bit about those? Yeah. Um, so in general, blue zones are the areas where um, humans tend to l- uh, live the longest mm-hmm. so far yeah, with the research. Um, there's three places uh, that are like ranked as the top three. Uh, the top three blue zones. Um, and the, those places are Okinawa, Japan. Uh, Saradina, Italy, and Luma Linda, California. Yeah. Um, just, just a couple things on those. Uh, Japan is really big on gardening, um, which invites the uh, the exercise as well as the nutritional value that the uh, the gardens give off. And then uh, Italy always maintains a positive attitude, and then they they also have a good sense of humor, which and just it, keeps them light. And, mm-hmm. and then one of the big things with Italy or with uh, Saradina is that they're they have a very healthy Mediterranean diet, mm-hmm. which can which has a lot of um, complex carbs and lots of fruits and vegetables uh, mm-hmm. in that diet, which it definitely is one of the biggest things that I believe that keeps them living longer since they're eating so healthy and being um, just active in general, I, th- I believe. Mm-hmm. And then um, in Luma Linda, California, uh, there is a religious group um, which studies the religion of Adventism, uh, which is just um, essentially everyone. Uh, they don't smoke. They don't. Um, they don't drink. They don't do drugs. They uh, stay very active um, in their in whatever age they are and whatever um, stage of their life they are in. They 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 stay very active. They make sure to eat healthy, and they. They always try to keep um, very healthy relationships with each other uh, because they, ha- I believe, um, happiness leads uh, a stress, almost a stress-free life if mm-hmm. you're always able to talk. If you have someone that you can always talk to, that you really enjoy talking to, you're not going to be stressed talking to that person. And if, if you have a lot of those people and if you're living around with a lot of those people and doing things, always doing 
things with them and always eating a healthy diet with them, I believe that that definitely contributes to a lot of um, the uh, living longer um, effects mm -hmm. that their community has on each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now, uh, kind of getting close to, to wrapping up, uh, what uh, would you say is the recipe to, to living a long time uh, and without stress? Uh, a recipe, uh, definitely um, low pressure workouts um, because you always, when you, when you do get to the, the, fret, the, the older and fragile age, um, you definitely can't be doing high demanding workouts, but uh, definitely continually to do uh, any type of workout will definitely keep you healthy. Uh, like um, Cole was saying before uh, in Serodina, help keeping a healthy mindset and mm -hmm. sense of humor towards life is definitely one one very um, big uh, effect or just cause for mm -hmm. I believe living longer simply because of just if you keep a positive mindset you'll be able to stay relaxed longer and not have as much cortisol pumping through you so mm -hmm. you'll have those you'll have less cortisol pumping through you so there'll be less damage to your brain in general yeah. Um, just, just the fact that you have to approach stress with the positive attitude. We keep going back to that because that's a large part of it. Um, knowing that once you have to do something stressful and just being prepared for it is just in itself so valuable. And I think that's a big takeaway of part of this project. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like staying active, eating right, and having a healthy mindset uh, are, I believe, the key features into living a long, um, staying in, living a long life. Um, and I know that the people in Luma Linda, um, since they don't do any, uh, since they don't drink any alcohol, do any drugs or whatever, that definitely, I definitely feel like that contributes um, a decent amount to living longer. But I know that there are, there have been like people that like live to 90 and they've smoked and drank every day mm -hmm. of their life. So um, I definitely believe that staying, um, not drinking as much um, definitely will help your health. But I believe that's just one of the side things that you would consider, I believe. But keeping a healthy a mental state, uh, healthy, uh, just act active life, and then a nice, healthy diet mm -hmm. will definitely keep you living longer. Yeah, and, and as college students do, I, I would uh, say that you, you both have ignored sleep uh, yeah. as uh, the mm -hmm. last key ingredient in, uh, yes. in living long. Mm -hmm. uh, I think something that you find when you uh, look at or... Um, uh, interview the people that have lived to 90, 100 plus, uh, a lot of them will say, even though if, if they do drink and smoke or mm -hmm. uh, do other, or don't work out and all yeah. that stuff, uh, I think they'll s still mention that they um, sleep. Yeah. Uh, the kind of recommended uh, amount. Yeah. Not, not like always like there's, uh, there's obviously like you can sleep too little and you can sleep mm -hmm. too much. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so always like, because you could go to bed at three in the morning but then not wake up until three in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And while that, is still a long while to sleep, a long period of time to be used as sleeping time. But I definitely think getting the right time, like starting at the right time and waking up, like go to bed at nine, mm -hmm. wake up at eight or whatever, have mm -hmm. just a decent nine or 10 hours of sleep. And I definitely think that is, a, like you're saying, a yeah. very large contributor to living long. Yeah, so I, th I think we'll, uh, kind of wrap up the uh, talking about uh, aging and, and sleep. Uh, so the last uh, two questions I have removed from, from aging and sleep and stress. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the, the men's uh, volleyball earlier. Is there uh, anything you'd like to promote in particular? Uh, uh, I believe that we will have a commercial coming out oh. uh, sometime soon. with Pro Produced uh, by the Loris Media? Uh, yes, oh. produced by the Loris Media. Um, I believe it, they'll be taking a freshman. Uh, I don't know who yet, but Definitely check check your TVs for that, because yeah. um, I definitely think that's going to be interesting to figure out what they're going to try to use that for. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that we'll definitely be having um, a, a lot of games over J term break. So if anyone's interested, <laughs> bored in, on in coming on campus, yeah, and if anyone's bored on campus, you know, just come come home over and watch the volleyball team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so for the uh, the cross country team here at Loris, um, last year we took 14th at nationals. This year we took 10th, and um, we're on the rise. We're graduating only two seniors, mm -hmm. and they were pretty far back in the pack. So I think 
next year we're going to have an amazing team. So if you're looking to run at a school, I think Loris is definitely somewhere we could use you. Yeah, so I hope some high school students are out there listening to our podcast. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I don't know how many people out there are, but yeah, I, I think uh, I would suggest that to the same. And the uh, volleyball team's on the rise, too. Mm-hmm. Yes, this will be our third year um, playing, We and we only have one senior this year, so mm-hmm. next year we'll definitely like we'll have a lot of kids coming in because mm-hmm. we already have three um, committed, and then we'll only be losing one next year. Mm-hmm. And he's and like Cole was saying, like he's he's not that um, far in the front mm-hmm. either. So I definitely think that next year will be another great year for Loris. Yeah. Great. Uh, so my last question, a little, a little bit of an oddball question, is uh, if there's anything that uh, you're dying to tell other people about, uh, like I said in the past, things or fads or th- uh, something you've come across. Web's a pretty pretty broad general question. I have. Um, if anyone likes, kind of, I've I kind of stumbled upon. Um, old swing music um that is kind of like i i wouldn't say it's coming back but i'm finding a lot more of it on like youtube or whatever um and i really enjoy it um there's this i found uh one band called caravan palace that i absolutely adore uh, now i've only been listening to them for a few months now but it they have a very very different music i think it's a they take a lot of like the kind of oldie like like old like 50s and 40s music and kind of puts a current twist on it Mm. and i really enjoy that kind of music and Mm. it kind of always keeps me jazzed up so i definitely think if you guys if you if anyone is looking for a a new band to listen to i think caravan palace would be a great addition to your playlist Mm -hmm. um so this is pretty random but uh there's this show I've been watching, and actually you brought it up mm-hmm. a couple weeks back. It's called Black Mirror. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> it's quite the show. Um, my first semester of college, I was uh, when I wasn't studying or running, I'd always watch it. Um, and I, I'd have to prevent myself from watching it because I would just be so like stressed out and like, wow, this, is, this could actually happen. Um, it's sort of like Twilight Zone. I haven't really seen much of that, but I've heard it's quite similar. It's just all about how we perceive reality mm-hmm. and uh, where like technology can lead us and it's really cool. So, Black Mirror, check it out. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you for having us. Yes.